Throw Gang, we are joined by the Baron of Bedroom Pop, Maestro of the Middle Part. His song's on TikTok, that shit is gussin' gussin'. His honor of the hairdo, he must have a schizophrenic penis because the stream's going crazy. The Titan of Twinks, way skinny but the bags are fat. The Fitz Dapperton, his music Slapperton, the cheeks Clappington while you fap a ton. Calm Jack the Ripper because he's killing these hooks. He must be French, how he be throwing strikes. Oh, you're also indie? Indie's nuts. New single Horizon is streaming right now. Artist, Gus Dapperton. Gus, how the hell are you? What up, guys? Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to need that to use like before I come out on absolutely. stage. Yeah, it'll absolutely. Be like, drop. It'll be like the Rocky music, and it's just this <laughs> behind it. Do bedroom pop artists have hype men? Just like no. singing all your lyrics for you while you're just fucking moshing on stage. No, I do that. but I, but my my band, like my my sister plays in my band and she's on stage and she gets Nepo she'll, like, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, she she was um, she rips. She's way better at music than I am. Uh, I kind of just am an imposter, but right, um, right. a face. She'll yeah. like come out and like hype up the crowd and stuff. So really, she's kind of a hype man. Yeah. Okay, well, if she wants to use these, if she wants to borrow this, like she's yeah. more than welcome to. Does she? Okay. Does she have affair. this stage name too? Did she rock with the Dapperton alias? Or? No, she goes by Amadel. Okay, um, which was like an old family name. Uh, Sounds like an yeah. old old ass name. Yeah. How did you, d- Jeremiah? <laughs> yeah, like an Amish ass name. Yeah. Are we asking him how we got to Gus Dapperton, or is that on here? Because I want to know like where that comes from. So yeah, so in high school, I started making music in middle school, and I would just mainly produce. And I had a bunch of different like kinds of music I like to make. Okay. So I had a few different SoundCloud accounts, oh, and you, uh, I had you, all these different names. Were you a SoundCloud rapper? <laughs> yeah. No, it, I made a. Uh, I made a lot of like old school hip hop beats, and my friends would like to rap. study too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're kind of like lo fi study beats, and, and my homies would rap on them. Um, and so I had an account called Spazzy McGee. Okay. <laughs> Gus ableist, Gang. dude, a little ableist. Gus Gang, we gotta find this. Um, so that that one's out there. There's still beats on there. Fuck yeah. That I'm, I'm Shout hyped out Spazzy, on. dude. Um, and there was a few others. I there was another one I made like electronic like house and like trap remixes and then finally i started like singing towards the end of high school and just make gus dapperton mm. yeah so once your balls dropped and your voice came <laughs> into into view I feel like my you balls adopted didn't the even, dapper didn't even drop yet at that point <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like i have a way deeper the early shit is just falsetto gus <laughs> yeah right? yeah well spazzy mcgee we're so happy to have <laughs> you the first thing we want to do is a fit check uh for the audience at home we're going to walk us through the totality of everything you wore today gus the choice for you is do you want to go top down or bottom up and there is a correct answer let's see let's go i think let's go bottom up Woo! Yes. got it dude um, all right one for one out the gate um I kind of forgot to, to <laughs> like to get a fit off. You look awesome, dude. I yeah. forgot to put the shoes I wanted to wear today uh, yeah. on, so it came with the Luso clouds. The you leather know Lusos. Yeah. I mean, you're drawn to them because they're so comfortable. They are. I was wearing them around my house, and I just totally forgot. Just out. What were um, the shoes that you were thinking of actually wearing? I'm curious. Some uh, Prada, like Mary Jane type. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, I'm happy we can still shout them out regardless. Yeah. Um, the f- the fit that once was. Yeah. The fit that some wasn't. Uniqlo socks. Nice, great socks. Some, some tie dyes. No, no, dude, these are from, my, from the loose these are from the, these are from, yeah, the stained from the loose, actually stained. Yeah, yeah. dude, a little um, DIY. <laughs> yeah, and then acne pants, I'm not really sure. The wide Some whale. Some wide, wide whale, yeah. whale, dude. And then I have this uh, tank, I'm not sure what it's from. Just like a Hanes pleaser or something? Yeah. Okay. And then this is a cardigan from this thrift shop. In Red Bank, New Jersey, called yeah. Shedhead Vintage. They're nice. sick. I, Shedhead, I dude. Highly recommend it. You got a uh, this is bus seat core. Yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looking like a damn public piece of transportation. Yeah. Yeah. Looking like the Fung Wa. <laughs> and then this is just a bandana. I have no idea. Where a dapper it's from. kerchief. Yeah. What about the also uh, vintage? No, I don't even know where this bandana. Is from. I guess a lot of people yeah. do that, but it's I a little. Think I just found. I think it. probably someone just left this at my house, and <laughs> yeah. I found it. Yeah. What about the hardware? We got the watch. You want to start with the watch or the earrings? Oh yeah, this is. Uh, my girlfriend got me this recently. I think it's from like L.A. Apparel or something. Okay. Really? Um, yeah. Wait, it L.A. Looks Apparel, like the blanks company? Yeah. Do they make I watches. Think, I think they sell like vintage, like some vintage pieces and okay stuff. um not like watch blanks at <laughs> yeah. no no rolex takes if these were the if R there were watch blanks i would totally <laughs> use them for like merch or something yeah yeah but the gus pro model yeah what does it say it's philip 
I never, I never even look at this. <laughs> Philip Persio? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so some, so or, a, vintage, a nice little vintage. little small yeah. watch, which is very in vogue yeah. right now. And then these I just got at, at a some like antique shop in like Long Island. And then I don't even know where I got this. Just a pearl straight from the yeah. ocean. What yeah. about the pennies? <laughs> what am I rock? Oh, Uniqlo. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Airism? Huh? Airism? No, they're just like the... Briefs, the black the brief, yeah. briefs. All right, <laughs> Let, oh, we got to talk about the shades. Yeah. Oh, uh, the shades. I got these Fendi shades Woo! that I'm hyped on. Bedazzled. Yeah, <laughs> the bedazzled ones. And then the jacket you came. This is flight then joint. This is uh, acne as well. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah. How much acne do you own? Are you a big acne guy? Yeah, I like I, I like acne and I like um, Eckhouse Lada a lot. Mm, I feel like they're kind of yeah. similar yeah. in like those ways where they're not. Gender they're kind bending. of designer, but they're like. Not super overpriced, like they're yeah, kind yeah. of affordable, but they're like well made. You got to so. get the Eckhouse lot of uh, assless chaps. <laughs> those are <laughs> that'd be a good bang. stage fit for yeah. sure, dude. Do they, they make those? Yeah, yeah. 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 cheeks wow. out, yeah, <laughs> cheeks hanging. <laughs> uh, all right, I think that's a complete fit check. We are drinking on some Green Point's finest to keep the fucking pipes nice and lubricated. Mm. Yeah. All right, Gus, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the podcast. First and most important mm-hmm. question, and I'm not asking this with, with any. Animosity, disdain in my voice. <laughs> uh, I've been working on my on my anger issues and everything. And this, <laughs> this bowling tournament was a few weeks ago. I have to know though, why is it that you and all your homies are so good at bowling? So <laughs> there is a very logical question to this. Um, I feel like after quarantine, yeah, the first things to start opening up weren't like bars. So bowling alleys and like movie theaters would have you know like small groups able sure. to go so we just started going to gutter the literally sure. that gutter all the time that's your home the court your home lanes yeah oh so you knew like the break of the lanes and <laughs> yeah. you could read the lanes well. yeah i knew how they oil it the oil pattern <laughs> yeah um, hey, yo, let me get on number seven he's reading the, the greens at the gutter <laughs> dude. The yeah. Browns. <laughs> no, I, yeah they give me the scoop but so you guys would just like roll every me week? And, or? Me and Kevin and Tommy, the dude who did the backspin, that was we crazy. we would go a lot right after quarantine, and because we would just go like wait for forty five minutes, and it's basically like you're at the bar, and then yeah, yeah. and then you just go bowl for a little. So yeah. we would do that a lot, um, like I, as things started opening up, okay. and then we just got really into it and we still go all when the time. you started out were you like absolute fucking noob because you sucked your yeah is fucking crush, no well dude. i i'm like i love like weird like bar games like i love there's a game called snooker have you heard of snooker like the like the pool. english pool yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like english pool i love that i've only played it a couple times but i love watching that there's this dude who's like the michael jordan of snooker <laughs> <laughs> some fucking bloke, just some random yeah, ass. His dude. name's Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's like, <laughs> of course it he's, is. He's like, that's like my, like, he's my role model. <laughs> he's, um, your, he's your MJ. Yeah. What about like darts? Are you nice at darts too? I'm okay at darts. Okay. Um, Big buck. But I just, I, I'm not even like that good at any of these games. I just love they're fun. Them. Like shuffleboard and, and like poker, hunter. poker. Even, yeah. And, like, okay. If it's a game, whatever. Um, <laughs> but. You yeah. just love to. Dr- you just love an excuse to drink. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Well, just All these something. Are just drinking adjacent. I need. I can't just like chill. I have to have like an activity to right. do. I have to have a job or something. Idle hands are the devil's plaything, of course, yeah. Gus. Okay. You yeah. ever heard Gus Dapperton's uh, play over the the speakers at a bowling alley? Is that like your dream? No, <laughs> no, I haven't heard that. Um, <laughs> Not yet. Let me slip I this shoe guy heard. a little USB. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure, like, Soup Will Only has come on. Fan, some put on point. some Spazzy yeah. McGee. Did, uh, yeah. did Tommy develop his fucking reverse throw, like, post quar or has that no, always been No, he, he's always done that. <laughs> Kevin Kevin was always pretty good Ciao at bowling. He, Tommy and Kevin are both, like, really good at Is Tommy the short king in the crop top? Yeah. Oh, yeah, my God. With, like, he was the fucking head, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, no, he had, like, a mullet. Oh, that's Jaden. Jaden was fire. Yeah, Jaden was really the best good, best looking too. team by far. If yeah, there was a prize for that, I know you guys lost a big wet. And his, I wanted his crew dude, of Craigslist hardos, but yeah. ultimately you guys yeah. look the best for sure. Um, now we, I really wanted to come like in matching fits, and I was like, let's. We don't have enough time to like get shirts or anything, so let's do. I wanted to do like suits. And oh yeah, all do suit. Fuck, looks, that's what Dime Piece did. They did all suits. Yeah, too, so that was a way for sure. But no one wanted to do it, so I was like, <laughs> fine. They yeah. needed more mobility, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fucking Jaden needed his uh, performance crop top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Real, real lot of like hip movement there. Yeah. Shout out to boys. Well, the Rusty Garter Tournament was actually our second um, cosmic kind of meeting of the minds because we actually have a bit of a history. 
My question for you, Gus. Would you like to thank me on record about getting your first ever <laughs> Pigeons and Planes write-up, which ultimately <laughs> broke your career? Um, I'll thank you for that for sure. Thank You're you. Welcome. Is that facts or cap? When you that, saw the clip. I think that's definitely facts. They They <laughs> definitely, like posted my music before in like these playlists and like monthly right. weekly like right. songs to listen to this and they week. break a lot of motherfuckers let's yeah be clear. but Shout that, that was probably the the first like write-up they did right on me for sure it was what what it was your first ever ep yeah so that was in the summer of 2017 or 18 or Damn, something dude Maybe. Way back. Yeah. Never wrong. Except Only like early, this guy over well, here. Shout out to Tina because she was like, sh- she was like, hey, my homie Gus is doing it. Can I write it up? Uh, and I was like, here's info at Pigeon. Yeah. 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 What a but guy, that, dude. Yeah. He really A&R'd it. Yeah. But then I had, to, I had to nudge the guy. I was like, hey, like, keep an eye out for this one. Oh, she emailed it. He's like, okay, I got it. Don't worry. We're good. I like this music. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, what's my royalty back pay look like? <laughs> do, I yeah. hit, do, I hit the, do I hit the people at Warner Records? Like, now you, now you yes. info at GusDapperton.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. paid forward. Invoice uh-huh. there. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Shout out BMP, man. Yeah. Yeah, um, they're dope. Okay, but for the next album, which is coming this year, can we say that? Yeah, um, definitely. Okay. Yeah. You're building out this whole world that's kind of like centered on the project, right? Kind of mm-hmm. going back to your high school days of like creating characters, which is something you do with all your projects. What hallucinogen <laughs> can we thank for this trip down the Gus yeah. Dapperton rabbit hole we're about to take? <laughs> um, I don't even know <laughs> at all too of them. Ma- there are too many, too many. All, to of, name. all of them. Nah, but this, um, nah, the, the sort of like metaphor and, and like visual that I was referencing is just also like after quarantine when things started opening up, I was just like, I, I was one of those people who wasn't inspired at all during. Uh, COVID, You're like really? this blows, dude. Yeah, no, <laughs> I bowling with the I homies, couldn't right? make I couldn't make anything, and I I didn't even try. Like writer's just, block or yeah, just writer's bummed. block, and just kind of like I guess a little bummed because kind of based my entire life off the fact that like art will always have a place in the world and be important mm-hmm. and like just change, a naive change dumb lives. Child. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and then when that and then when like covid happened i was like oh it, it, like actually nothing really matters except your music like, can't save the people's lives of health and safety. Of yeah. People. yeah no dude, so i'm like, sorry <laughs> so well i just didn't ever think something like that was like possible in such a short amount of time but right. um so no i kind of just sat back and like I, I already had a lot of music done that album orca that i released mm-hmm. kind of during covid because it was a bit like timely and the uh the message was sort of relatable to i think what people were going through for me it was a lot about like depression and mm-hmm. stuff and, and people were spending a lot more time in their bedroom so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a bedroom pop album yeah, yeah. <laughs> it never hit harder yeah. <laughs> yeah but so it so like for me it was just kind of like i was going pretty hard just reintegrating into society and like wanting to see people and socializing mm-hmm. yeah. and like going out a lot and so the visual for the record is kind of about like having this one crazy night out mm-hmm. and you go into this like fantasy underworld of New York City and have to make it home before the sun comes up or else you're stuck in this like time loop. Right. Mm-hmm. Turn like into nothing a pump, ever before you turn changes. into a pumpkin, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um yeah, so that's kind of what that like the the big visual agenda is. With is the that videos. for the whole album or just for this one single horizon? For for the whole album, that's so does that what so it's about. does the world building and visuals come like after the music's done or are they hand in hand? They're pretty hand in hand depending on the song. I think I I wrote a couple songs um, that I knew were starting to follow a pattern, but they didn't really spark any visual agenda. And then I wrote this song "Wet Cement" that came out, and that sort of sparked like what everything was gonna look like and. Um, that was like the domino that kind of yeah, like pushed yeah, it all yeah, forward. Exactly, right, right. Yeah. Sick, dude. Was yeah. there a moment that where you finally got through your fucking writer's block? Or was it just being out and about and just being like, I love life again? <laughs> yeah, was it I a singular even... night in the underbelly, the CD underbelly of <laughs> NYC? You're like, back outside, let's yeah. go. I think Let just, me call the guy. <laughs> I think what it is is it, it's like it. good music actually comes from like being real and talking about what's actually going on in mm-hmm. your life. And I think I, I never really have writer's block, but I avoid like doing that all the time because it's, it feels a little bit like there's a, a lot of pressure and vulnerability. So like I can, I'll like every day I'll sit down on the piano and write something new, but if there's no, nothing to actually base it on, it's just going to be trash. Right. It's got to be tangible yeah. in your real life. And you'll hear it. It'll feel so, hollow. So I think it just took me a while to like get to that point of realizing that's what I had to write the album about sort of, yeah 
uh, well, one of the going back to like the very first EP back in 2017, 2018, I think like what people one of the first visual cues that people immediately got was the bowl cut. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. For I don't know if it's just for the the single record or for the whole project, mm-hmm. but uh, you, it looks like you have like a fucking Nike swoosh. That is for the whole project. Like a Klaus <laughs> Nomi esque yeah, yeah. like fucking yeah. swoop. It's Little gonna be in boy. that vein. It might not be the one swoop <laughs> every time, but it's like double in swoop? this <laughs> swooped up. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. The double swoop is kind of crazy. Double swooped out, dude. Yeah. <laughs> double swooped up. Yeah. When you switch up the hairstyles, is that coming from your big brain that the hair covers, or do you have like a secret weapon, homie, who's fucking up the follicles? No, I I always uh, I'm I'm like I'm like obsessed with like Pinterest and <laughs> shit, and I just start saving a million things that I could reference. But no, I I so like this this next project, it it all stems from like the music. So. um like the last project, I was playing a lot of live instruments, and uh, it was really just like not a ton of crazy production. It was just like acoustic guitar, piano, drums, bass, vocals. Simple. No, yeah, very simple. And this project, I was getting a little crazier, and um, I was referencing a lot of like 80s synth sounds, mm. and then I was playing a lot of like clean swing, like jazz guitar. So those two things kind of like triggered this sort of 1980s kind of aesthetic and then also this like prohibition era Mm -hmm. kind of aesthetic so um i try to combine those two sort of decades with the visual agenda because it also feels like the music kind of sounds like that too is that what we see like a like the big suit yeah so that's like the big like wall street (laughs) like 80s suits and then the hair is kind of this like prohibition era like flapper sort Mm. of hair and makeup (laughs) yeah yeah. An flap- amalgamation of the most annoying guys at any yeah. party. <laughs> Gus Flapper, but he does it. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, this next question was written by Lauren, so I actually I want to let him ask it just because. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, is there a haircut? Wait, what is the question? Oh sorry. Oh, <laughs> here we go, Gus. When you renovate the curtains, do you also install new carpet? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You don't have a swooch over yeah, the fucking right. over the no. balls. <laughs> just just circling it. <laughs> If it, I think if it was more like <laughs> tangible and pliable, I would maybe yeah, try it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could do the you could do the Tom Ford uh, Gucci G. Yeah, right. Just shaved yeah. in yeah. But all it, time. But it's for Gus. <laughs> yeah, some sort of a sh- is a there a haircut you've gone through that you regret the most? I mean, there was like the red middle part, right. the the neon green bowl cut. This every class. time I get a haircut, I regret it. And You're then like, what I the fuck did and I then do? and then the next day I wake up and I'm like, this looks sick. <laughs> I just it's just like a. A shock to the system. Sure. I, I get really bored of my hair really easily. I go change it. Great hair haircut. I was gonna say uh, it's easy to get bored when you have amazing hair versus <laughs> like you know some other people. Yeah. I might know where you don't really yeah. have any. Options. I, I think it's the one thing though. Like I'll if I like if my hair starts getting too long, like I literally won't go outside because <laughs> I just I just like hate how it's starting to look. look I don't know. I don't know why. Um, it's not like vanity though. It's the it's same like with it's the same with like clothes. Like if if you like are getting like i don't know i i hate shopping i like having new clothes mm-hmm. but i hate shopping so you want them for free is what you're saying yeah <laughs> yeah send me stuff for sure um <laughs> so i, I think i know the feeling bro <laughs> when you look in the mirror and you're you're like recycling yeah. all the same clothes you, you're like i don't even want to like yeah. go yeah. out you know what you're I mean? looking at eighty thousand things in your closet i have yeah. nothing i have no yeah. clothes yeah. and it's like just like what we always say Cancel and, the function. and shout out deon sanders but look good play good feel good yeah I mean, yeah is the haircut yeah. for you like it definitely doesn't come from a place of vanity or attention seeking for sure but like is it where you kind of draw your power from like samson is it like your hmm. superpower a new hit crazy yeah haircut? i mean I- yeah i think the like the way i like to think about it is is like expressing yourself kind of like really hardcore mm-hmm. um extreme <laughs> is it kind of is like a big confidence booster especially when you know, you're feeling insecure about it and you just do it and you're like, these are all the things that I like and reference and this, these are the things that make me who I am. Um, it definitely like, yeah, it gives me sort of like a As confidence boost. As a Pinterest mood boarding god, yeah. I'm assuming like you look at a lot of other people's hairstyles, right, for reference. Mm-hmm. Who, in your opinion, has the best hair in the biz? And is it you? And then maybe like, who's the best all time? I mean... I think I I would I, my immediate thought was just like David Bowie. Sure. I think I I think I grew up being inspired by musicians who were like bold and and would switch up their looks from record to record mm-hmm. based off um, what the stuff was sounding like and not being afraid to like try different things. So 
Uh, I loved Bo like the, Bo was the king of that. Yeah, of yeah, course. and Shout yeah, Ziggy. even like Michael Jackson back in the day, and um, even like Britney Spears and shit. Yeah, uh, for sure. Does Britney Spears have the best hair in the game? <laughs> no, I I don't think she has the best hair in the game. I I would say Dave Dave Bowie for sure. That's like who okay. I'm in very yeah, inspired by. Absolutely. Um, is there a style phase? We talked about haircuts that you regret. Is there a style phase you went through that you regret the most? Uh, not really, honestly. I think just yeah, when I start like when I don't go shopping for way too long and I'm just stuck with a lot of stuff that I don't like wearing anymore. What do you dress like in high school? In high school, I, I in by the end of high school, I was also like bleaching my hair and um, painting my nails and shit, and like cutting my jeans. So it like it's it's a just a more DIY version of what I look like now. I think. Mm, okay, right. now you got a, a little scratch. version. Yeah, 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 yeah. but wait, definitely <laughs> like no designer shit, just like all thrifted stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, well, your hair and your style were recognized by the good folks over at Celine a few years ago. What is shooting? with Hedy Slimane like that was awesome definitely like a bucket list thing um it was it was really surreal because they just had a couple like they just had a window of time and they're like can you fly out to LA and, and like shoot for this is this desert. request seemingly out of nowhere too like were you expecting it was um, it like a negotiation thing or no just we like we had they Celine was like had been like sending me some mm. stuff and I think I was like on their radar and then I think they had an idea for this part of their campaign and then i just flew out and literally like i was just in the car <laughs> with hetty like driving to the desert for like two and a half hours both ways and he was damn nicest. what do you guys talk about yeah we're just talking about music like he like lo- he's obsessed yeah, obviously yeah. was he a fan of of you had I, he heard were you playing him shit you know, in the whip? I, I think his like he's like yo you ever heard of this guy spazzy mcgee <laughs> <Yeah>. fire <laughs> i think his team i think his team were like big fans of me and okay. they put him on sick so I, I think it was what it do you was what more do you play on the ox court in that on that two and a half hour drive oh, man i think he, honestly i feel like we weren't playing any music we were just, just, talking, just deep talking. in the throes of conversation yeah I, th- I think i showed him a new new song or oh, two. oh sick yeah how was the reception there good good yeah yeah, yeah he was like that's a crazy coast i told him i told him like i wanted to and he was like offering it too to to make some music for like a a virtual show or something, okay. which which I'm always always down to do something like that. Did he give you any like particular piece of advice or so that you that stuck with you, or was it all just kind of like small talk? No, it was it was a lot of small talk because I was just like getting to know him and sure. stuff. Um, and we were talking about what we were gonna like shoot and everything and the clothes and all that. So that's a long drive. <laughs> that's very long. That's five make, hours in a whip with Eddie. Make, yeah, he had to make a couple phone calls too. And on the <laughs> okay. way on the way back. <laughs> He had to make more phone calls. Okay. okay. All right. So, yeah. He's like, hold on. I got to call this TikTok kid that uh, yeah. has 300 million followers that I want in my next show. Yeah. yeah. I got to send him a hoodie, dude. Did you guys stop for any food? Did you stop like a Del Taco or anything? With <laughs> No. What do we lunch? have? No. We, we like ordered some lunch in the in the <laughs> desert. I don't know. Damn. And then, but shooting with him like as a photographer, because he actually, legit, he himself shot Yeah, he the shoots. Photo. He shoots everything, yeah. How was, he, how was he as a photographer as like just a director? Uh, re- really good for sure. I think like, yeah, he's kind of just a, like a director of the whole whole thing. And th- I was super surprised. Like, the team was like really small. It was just like really? super intimate. It was like three or four of them like running the whole thing, casting everyone, arranging everyone's like accommodations, the creative direction, the shoot. It was it was like a really small. Did squad. you like the fit that they put you in, or did you have any? Yeah, did you have I any uh, input on it. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> I <laughs> always give a little bit of input, even though they don't want me right. to give it. <laughs> I don't know why. Pipe like, down, sweetheart. Yeah. We gotta, gotta leave it to the pros. I, every <laughs> you time, protect your image. Yeah. yeah, every time I do shoot, because I'm also like, I'm not like just a model. Like I also <laughs> not just a pretty face. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I'm he like, also bowls I'm, well. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm like a musician first, right, so I'm yeah, like. Of course. I don't want to wear anything I wouldn't actually feel comfortable you protect wearing, your image, bro. So yeah. I definitely like. I'll give some suggestion, but this this one was like fair game. I I liked pretty much everything. Did they? Were you, were you in all red? Am I imagine that? I had I had red hair. Okay, <laughs> like completely okay. red hair. Yeah. Did, did I read somewhere that you wore some of your own stuff, or was your own jewelry? Like, what was it? Anything? Yeah. Wait. Was I, your own guitar. Yeah, okay. I brought, brought my guitar. He brought the axe, dude. Yeah, oh my God. We played so Wonderwall. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> yeah. Plain well, that's the, whip that's again. the one funny thing about like using instruments as props and stuff. Like it's like not plugged in. And, right. Like, in the middle You're, of like, the like, shredding <laughs> nothing. <laughs> shredding yeah. into the no, void no, in the and desert. And <laughs> there, there, <laughs> there was one part where they were like they're like, Yeah, play something <laughs> and like we can like put it in after and I was like, Well, like we don't have anything to record it with an electric guitar. She's like, We'll just record it with your phone and put it in your pocket. I'm like, No, it's like it's not gonna like you're not gonna hear it at all because it's an electric guitar. <laughs> and they're like, just try it. Like, it's like bing, 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 yeah. Bing, bing. Don't quit your day job. Yeah. I don't think you could be an engineer. Like, also, yeah. wouldn't it look if they tried to dub something over? No, and I know. I was like, I, completely different. And that's what they were like. They're like, you wanna, you can like <laughs> dub it over. After I was like, I- I'm not gonna be able to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, good, good idea. But maybe something that doesn't have the best execution. Yeah. This is no. why we need input from the artist. Yes, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, we need more electricity. That was the yeah. one thing I was giving the most. Believe input all about talent. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that was clearly you. You said to yourself that's a bucket list moment. Mm-hmm. Has there been like what's been besides that? Maybe like the craziest instance where you've looked around and you're just like I can't believe this is where my art that I started in high school, my bedroom, has taken me. Like the biggest pinch me moment, if you will. I mean, yeah, I think like honestly, like. I don't, re- yeah, like I don't have a ton of things on my bucket list because I just never thought that any of these things would be possible, like you didn't ever in, in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of like don't really have anything. Like all the things that everything is extra, like every it's all gravy, it's all house money. Yeah, everything is just like, yeah, I'm I'm just so hyped. Like I can make music and like pay my rent for making music. That's like that's really goal. all you want. Yeah, yeah, you're a humble guy. Um. Wait, so you really didn't, like, straight up, you didn't, like, believe in the music? Because you must have known it was, like, good, right? But, like... No, totally, like... Yeah, no, I just didn't... You know, there's a ton of music I listen to that doesn't get the, re- like, right attention it deserves, I think. So it was, it's more something like that. And also, yeah, like... I Like, when I... I grew up in Warwick, New York, which is a pretty, like, rural area in upstate New York, and I would, like, you know come to the city a lot towards the end of my high school career and like play shows and stuff but in warwick there wasn't a ton of people didn't have anything to like reference because if i wasn't in like musical theater or like jazz guitar or something Mm -hmm. then it's like what do you mean like you want to do music you're not in any music programs (laughs) i'm like no like i make beats they're like what is that (laughs) what is a beat (laughs) i'm like no (laughs) it's not like if you hear like (laughs) <laughs> a rapper rapping it's everything else so you got to explain the concept of beats to these people yeah so <laughs> like my you know no one really understood that. my sister always was a like huge supporter and she always got it but um yeah i just didn't think it was like that possible you kind of like believe not that they're hating but like they you just kind of like well i guess they might be right right like yeah no totally and i it just was yeah Damn, that's i weird. thought it'd be hard to make make it out of there did like, you get hate for like uh for like bleaching your hair fi- finger nail polish like fucking clothes like were, did you get fucking bullied for <laughs> no nah, so it, it i had such a weird like in between because my school definitely revolved around sports mm-hmm. and i was really good at lacrosse and i could you were like, a jock i wasn't even a jock i i like nice with the stick i so i skateboarded growing up mm. and the skateboarders would get like made fun of and me and all my friends made music like i would make beats and then a couple of my friends would rap and stuff but i also was really good at lacrosse and a few other things so like they would make fun of me but then not really bully me like they would tease me but not like i could like hold my own against them and then like yeah kind of like like there were kids like on my lacrosse team who would like in school maybe like tease me and then on the the field they would just shut up you know right, I mean? right he's right. too nice so yeah. he's um, nice with a stick i guess it's really it really is like 21 jump street where it's like kids don't bully each other anymore everyone's yeah just like everyone's just nice to each other right <laughs> yeah i mean there was definitely like bullying in my my school but, but only the um, skateboarders yeah <laughs> and and <laughs> also that was the thing skaters. it was more of like a it wasn't really a bullying it was like a back and forth kind of it was like crews. Hating it was on each yeah. 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 yeah you had your exactly. crew they had the push and pull of you know high school politics if you will but you made it out of Warwick. Has there not been a moment where you're like on stage at like Tokyo or some shit where you're just like, holy fuck, like I can't believe everyone's singing my lyrics? Is uh, that that's that's that still like yeah? I, I think you. I think the first time that yeah, like I guess like the big shock moment was the first time I went to Europe in 2019, like in the beginning of the year. We didn't we did a couple shows in the states, which 
all felt like a gradual gro- like growth. So um, snowball effect. Yeah. So so like I, I would play at a bunch of venues in the in New York City, and like you know more and more people would start to come out. So I didn't really have that. But then when I went to Europe the first time, we played our first show in, in Dublin. Mm. Um, it was like sold out and nuts. Was the snooker and homie in attendance? Whatever that guy. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> if yeah, Ronnie O'Sullivan. If, yeah, you're, was if you're watching was this, Sully in the building. <laughs> please, please come to my next London show. Um, VIP backstage access on the hundred percent. You can have artist pass, whatever. <laughs> um, but in Dublin, you're like, holy fuck. Yeah. Because like New York, it's in the states. It's yeah. Nothing, but when you hear like other people's accents, like singing songs, yeah. you're like, holy shit! I've never even. Yeah, heard it this accent so bad. in real life, <laughs> and then no. and then there's like a crowd of people. That's that's yeah, for sure crazy. Do you think that now that people um, are gonna know that you're a jock that was just <laughs> fucking super sick at lacrosse, that's gonna ch- like change their like perception of you? They're like, oh, we thought he was a sweet little like bedroom pop guy, yeah. but now I he's thought a- he was getting swirlies like me. <laughs> now I can't relate. He got pussy. <laughs> uh, no, I I was kind of like, no, nah, I don't know. I was also kind of like a loner in in high school. I would just I literally. That was my thing. I was like, Fuck I'm going to just make beats so much like yeah. that. One day I can enjoy myself. Do you have so. any hip hop aspirations? Now that you like have a clear foothold in the music industry, like, are we going to see Gus rapping? <laughs> no, <laughs> but producing? I definitely have been able Gus to work, Snapperton. work with some artists recently that I was like a huge fan of. Um, so just working with those artists, like... Like rappers? Yeah, yeah. Just like... Growing up, I think in middle school, my first kind of my big inspirations were like to because because I wasn't like naturally good at guitar. I didn't even like try it singing. I wasn't a good singer, wasn't good at piano or any of these things. And I loved like beats and I loved Jay Dilla and mm. like uh, Mad Lib, MF Doom and oh, all right that. Here. So yeah, we got the metal face oh, right there, yeah. dude. We can add that to the look. So <laughs> so. Once I like hopped in Garage Band and was like, "Oh, like this is how you make beats," that's when I was all super hyped on it. So I loved like Pro Era and Odd Future mm. and you raised all on that, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What artists? What rappers specifically have you worked with? That can you, you say? Can tell I don't, us I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but are will we see some of this? You'll on see it hopefully this su- summer. This Sick. summer thing. Yeah. Nice. Hell yeah, dude. Who's an artist that you haven't worked with yet that you'd love to work with one day? Yeah, if you want to manifest Man. it on Pod right now, go crazy, bro. Damn, Madlib. <laughs> I mean, that'd be yeah, that'd be crazy. I'm trying to think. Quasimodo. <laughs> yeah, Quasimodo. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I don't even know. I get asked this sometimes. I think it'd be like, sometimes I'm not even trying to like work with a lot like of Britney these Spears. people. You're yeah, like, never meet your heroes. <laughs> I would love to like meet like you know like some old rock stars and stuff like Tom York and. Liam Gallagher and and shit. I don't know if I would want to work with them, but like I'd love to meet those those folks. Of course, yeah. we should hit up Liam Gallagher's son in DMs. Yeah, he fucks with TF. He oh really? Yeah, follows he follows. He follows the, the, the oh, that'd be, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's an artist you like? Okay, not ne- even necessarily working with and like making music together, but just the artist you like hanging out with the most. Mm. He's just like the most. Yeah. You know, aligned don't with say your, your sister. Yeah. We. I mean, besides we her, a, there's a lot of like folks. Um, Spill t- uh, everyone that like opens for me on tour. Mm. I, I love hanging out with uh, Spill Tab. They're awesome. You're bringing the homies for a reason. Yeah, it's it's all the homies. Um, this band Michelle. They're from the city. They're super good. Um, who else? Oh, uh, Benny. Uh, mm-hmm. From that song, Soup Only. Oh, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna ask about it, bro. <laughs> Seven hundred million people can't be wrong. I'm very <laughs> glad that you uh, said <laughs> yeah. her name before we're like, I had how to do ask you about pronounce it. this. Uh, Benet. Honestly, <laughs> yo, honestly though, I, I say Benny. What does she say? I think she says Benny, but everyone <laughs> else. I was just hanging with her recently, and I think every like so many people say Benet. Oh, really? And Damn, she, I was right. I don't. I've never <laughs> seen her like correct. Well, she's maybe too polite, right? Well, it's like Jid and JID. Or yeah, something, you know? yeah. It's like just let yeah. people say how. They I don't want. know if there's a like a. If or it's like, yo, she's like, if you call me Benny, then I know that you're like valid. If you call mm. me Benet, then I know that you're just on your. I think shit. it's Benny. I think it's Benny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna yeah. go with Benny. Okay. <laughs> were, you, were, you, were you friends with Benny before this Smash Super Lonely came out, or did you guys become friends in the wake of the songs? No, we and success. Yeah, we we be. I mean, I wouldn't even say we became like homies until more recently because it was like 
right after the pandemic or like right after quarantine when we made it it was like that summer that fall um 2020 and my good homie daniel was working with her and he was like she's a big fan and we think you sound really good on this song and (coughs) i hadn't done like a lot of features before that because i really wanted to like establish for sure. my sound and shit um and it was perfect time so i was like yeah this sounds great i'd love to do it so i i literally just wrote it like you had no expectations honestly. no i just wrote it over the course of a week sent it back to them and they're like this is great i was like okay didn't really hear anything and they're like oh the song's coming out next week i was like oh sick um <laughs> cool so we we were like friends on about to cash out yeah we were friends online but um and then the, that song didn't even really take off until like six, seven months. Got the later. TikTok pump, right? yeah. yeah, for sure. Have you okay? Uh, as an artist, like if your shit starts going crazy on TikTok, which I know it has a few times, are you like, do you f- are you f- fine with that because it means more money, more streams, or are you kind of like, eh, I don't want to be known as a TikTok artist? I as think a sound. I think I'm okay with it for myself now because I've I've already like toured pretty extensively without tiktok yeah and most of the kids who come to the shows like we don't play super i don't play super only at my yeah. own shows right. so um i'd be super only stolen valor yeah it's any song <laughs> yeah exactly so <laughs> so i think like you're not john I, Mayer covering fucking learning to tom fly petty. or tom yeah, yeah tom petty but i'm okay show. with it because i already have a, a huge catalog and like you know a solid fan base but there is kids who just pop off off one song on tiktok and then it's hard for them to kind of like keep that momentum because right. they I guess it is good yeah. because now that pe- if people know you from TikTok they can go to your Spotify and be like oh he's yeah. been putting on music for like six or seven yeah, years yeah exactly now. Yeah. right so okay but that being said the Super Lonely track has 700 million streams on Spotify alone in a post Super Lonely world are you addicted to putting numbers on the board <laughs> it's a high bar dude I mean are you chasing that dragon <laughs> I mean I'm not chasing it in terms of, not really. I, I think the one thing I was chasing like the last couple of years was I just felt really like I've been trying to build my team out like on the last couple of years. And that's what gave me the most drive and anxiety was like getting the infrastructure together. Yeah. So now I work with like some really solid people and it took me a, a long time to like get here. I just meeting a lot of people and things were like moving really fast and then during covid i could finally like take a step back and breathe re-evaluate everything Mm -hmm. and so now i'm like with the exact team i want to be with so everything again like that's that was like the goal i wanted to reach so i obviously hope that you know i feel like i make music from a place of i don't know like i put my heart into it so i do Hope that more people would listen to that kind of music than some of the other like really contrived things. But sure. But no, I'm not cheap. Super Lonely is kind of like a, I don't know, kind of anomaly. Of, yeah, almost. yeah. So I, I don't really chase when that you, one. When you sit down to like you know, like you're saying that daily process of like, okay, I'm gonna tickle the ivories and like bang something out. Do you ever find yourself like almost like trying to reverse engineer something because you're like, damn, like I I do want another fucking smash, or you're like, it'll come when it comes. Because this I is a th- huge fucking song. I think dude, right. I think the right after that, maybe a little bit. Mm. But um, the things that we see blow up out of nowhere are random, mm. like and things that wouldn't normally blow up. Like uh, I mean, all of these songs are amazing. But like Steve, Steve Lacey, like Bad Habit. Yeah, that's like an. In, that's also like a bedroom pop yeah. song. Mm-hmm. So it's like I think just making. Staying true to yourself and, like, just being like, okay, I just got to keep following, like, you know, making art for the sake of innovating and shit. I think that's, like, the right way to approach it. If you try if you try too hard to follow a structure or, like, a trend, it's, it's, it's sure. going to be so bad. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Trash. Yeah. But how did it feel that, like, okay, like, se- like millions and millions of millions of new people are all of a sudden like drawn to this sound that you've been crafting and honing for decades now like that had to feel good no yeah totally totally for sure but but again like that song is like way more of 
Benny song. I kind of sure. just... Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 But, I kind of just did a verse on it and, like, added some synth and stuff. But, but you were kind of, like, the face of a genre. or one of the few faces of a genre. Like, it's a yeah, lot of pressure, yeah. you know? Yeah, totally. Well, you're, okay, so you're a feature on that. I know you've been a feature on a few other, like, Smash songs. So, yes, you have established your own sound and your own fan base, but as you branch out into this, like, this uh, tactic of <coughs> features... <laughs> And I have to imagine you're high in, in demand. Like, are you the music industry's secret weapon gun for hire? Yeah, dude. I do feel like I get reached out to more about f- features for sure. Yeah. What is that? How do you feel? I feel really good about it because I, I like, again, like coming from that hip hop background growing up, it feels like, you know, not mo- not as much of like an in indie thing but more of like a yeah. hip hop thing where you're just doing a it's like yo we need a fucking someone. we need a big need name a verse, to like sprinkle like, some adobo I like being this. able to just or do like a verse a, a hook assassin dude bring yeah. him in to fucking kill that yeah. shit yeah and any you know it also like helps tell people what other kind of music you listen to what sure. other kind of music you like what artists you vouch for and like want to work with and be affiliated with. So I, I love it for that reason, too. That's kind of like with the pod, how we like want people, like we want to build out the throne for the universe. Totally. So yes, you guys are doing the same thing with who yeah. you give those features totally. to. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So uh, the possibly million dollar question is, what's a Gus Dappy feature cost us these Ooh. days? So what's that walk that's going? really interesting. Um, <laughs> I will definitely give you a real answer. Like, Please. I don't go for the flat rate feature money like a lot of people do. A lot of people go for a, like they'll ask for a huge check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't do. I don't do that. A great example of this recently. Yeah. I don't do yeah, that. A whiz hook whatsoever. I don't even think K. I've. I don't even think I've collected a lot of the f- feature money. But oh, really? I like being able to write a large chunk of the song, produce on it, and give input, and then get more of like a fair split kind mm. of. Get so you want to truly bread. collaborate. You just want to be like, yeah. oh, hold on. Let me see what I got already saved up on yeah. the computer. What's the BPM? Yes. Here you go. No, <laughs> yeah. I BPM. always <laughs> like most, almost like all the f- features I've done, I've also like produced right. on. So um, I like being able to 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 do that. And I, I don't even like worry about it too much. So let's say so most of them are my friends too. Like a yeah. lot of the people. Yeah. So, let's say, so let's say an artist co- or let's say a label comes to you. And they're like, let's say your label comes to you and like, yo, Gus, we got this like up and coming kid. They were pouring a lot of like money and resources into their debut uh, major album. Like, we need you on this. We need you to, to do the production and the writing. Like, what's the price tag looking like? I think I've done a few ses- sessions and a lot of times like with writers and producers, people who are really sought after have a f- in, like a flat rate going into the session on top of then if you make a, a song and it's going to come out. But most of the time, like, I'm still kind of, I don't consider myself that. It's like you only really add it up at the end if you come out with a song that's going to be released. Gotcha. Kind of, okay. Yeah. But so there's sometimes it's like studio fees and shit, but I, I have like a home studio. Right. So it's like kind of working on spec or whatever to yeah. some degree. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Interesting. Well, your major label debut is on the horizon. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> album coming this year. So, like, after spending six or so years, you know, as on uh, your own shit as an independent, like, what's the difference, the main difference for you that you've kind of noticed between the grind of being an indie musician and putting something out with a major? Yeah, I mean, it's still pretty early on, but I think um, before I would, like, work with some distribution deals and things where there just wasn't as many people working on the marketing side. Mm. And I felt like I had to be also in charge of my own marketing in a way. Now someone can text like the playlist guy at Spotify. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Run it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. New indie. Number one now. (laughs) Exactly. But, um, no, I, d- I just wanted to take more off my plate to focus on the creative and, and yeah. the songs and what you do best. Yeah, and then really like hand off more roles to just so everyone could really nail it. So that's that's really what it is. And what was the one thing you're so ready to go off your <laughs> plate first and foremost? I think just yeah, I think just handing off like like the just on a Spotify, no, just like having more of a middleman between. So I'm not just like texting the, the mix and master engineer. Like we right. can get, you know, I can send all my notes more officially and like, um, and yeah, just interfacing with like 
You're not DMing things. Charlemagne for a fucking. I'm year. not like <laughs> uploading my own videos. I'm making yeah, them, yeah, editing right, right. them. I'm not like have like a 50 gigabyte thing. I'm like my Wi-Fi is like really bad <laughs> yeah. in my apartment. It's like it's that shit. It's mm. all that like little sh- like uploading it myself. Yes. You know. Oh, so. I got to make a vertical cut. For yeah. yeah, no, yeah, it's they, all all that stuff. It's like all the little. Yeah. Like social stuff, us, brother. And, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> why we have our own army yeah. as well. Of well and what's, what's something that you'll never, much better, you'll never relent control of? Is it like your personal image and your style? Yeah, it's it's like just the direct, it's direct, the direction of the music. Um, yeah, the we, direction of the music and the direction of the creative and my image and aesthetic. Because I, I always, but uh, this is the thing that like I kind of signed with Warner because I, I showed them basically almost a whole new album and they wanted to mm. like they're like alright this is already made he already <laughs> yeah. so like, nice, yeah. so I was like done. I was like I made the this homework. album this is what I'm gonna put out next if you guys like it if you're interested yeah um, and here's the creative I like had this huge mood board and like lyric sheets and all this stuff all ready to go so so because the music was already made it's not like playing in the majors has like affected the art itself yeah but has there been have you felt any pressure to like put out a smash hit or like a viral video or switch like, it hey up guys it's yeah i mean they, they they definitely <laughs> want like hits but i think <laughs> that's what i was saying before kind of with like some of these other songs blowing up on tiktok that normally wouldn't blow up like even super lonely like bad habits steve lacy like omar apollo evergreen mm-hmm. they're kind of like you know, otherwise would be more of like a deep cut on the album or something. No, absolutely. Um, maybe not super only. That one's kind of like <laughs> straightforward, but <laughs> some of the other ones. So I think they're like, just make whatever you want to make and they won't be like radio hits, but that maybe they're a viral. Right. Hit, you know what I mean? Maybe so you'll be featured on Euphoria. Is that where you were? No. Wait. You're on a TV show now. I mean, like oh, your music uh, was. Yeah. 13 Reasons 13 Why. Yeah. Okay. Why. Yeah. Right, right. Um, Without like ruffling the feathers of the new corporate overlords, is there something that you you miss from the old process of being indie? That like on the flip side of this, honestly, no. It's it's <laughs> been it's been great so far. And, and I, right answer. <laughs> I think no. I think also like you pass the test. It's 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 all circumstantial in the people you work with, and I I miss the people I used to work with more as a independent artist, and I I love a lot of the new people that I work with. Mm. Um, and that's a big part of also like signing somewhere is like your point person, like who's going to be your point right, person. right, absolutely. I love my point person. Um, so James Harris, right? That the based yeah, exactly. on the text messages, yes. right, right. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Has there been though, like, so I I worked in the music industry for like two years. Lawrence mm-hmm. is obviously it's just all one mm-hmm. fucking yeah, no, yeah, you know Venn diagram. But like, what's like the skeeziest thing you've had to necessarily p- kind of put up with? Not like be a part of or like something that just gives you the ick about the music industry. Which mm. you know, there's so much to choose from. Yeah, real dealer's choice on this one. He's like, "What can I legally say?" <laughs> like, do, you, do you have to walk into a room full of like old white guys and like, "Yes, yeah, Gus, this is the best thing I've ever heard." Yeah, people commenting on your look or anything like that. Like, you know, honestly, I can't even think of anything. I think one thing, there's been a few like mishaps recently just where it's not even an industry thing it's more of like a person thing but um i've had some people just like agree to things and like lead me on and then like kind of mm. drop out or like yes men but then over promise yeah. under deliver over yes p- men. over promise like a yeah. few few times but not really with like the lab- label or anything more just like uh the industry other art, other artists, these other motherfuckers orbiting. And I whatever. wanted to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Let You're on notice, this. motherfuckers. Let me ask you this because I think like uh, you know, bedroom pop is this phenomenon that, like Lauren said, like you are definitely one of the leading names of. Do bedroom pop stars party, or do you just like lay around and stare melancholically out the window? <laughs> it dep- It depends. I definitely depends party. On the weather. <laughs> I definitely party, and I feel like people are surprised. By oh, that really? Sometimes they want you to be like a fucking sad boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> for I your image, it, you're, ha- you're too yeah. happy, bro. I think in the beginning <laughs> of like bedroom pop, it was maybe like that. But no, um, yeah, no, I think people think I'm going to be way more art damaged and like unapproachable <laughs> yeah. and way more like unapproachable and shit. Yeah. But I'm, 
I always have like hated people who are like that, who are like so cool, too cool for school. Right, right, for sure. My soul's broken. Yeah, because because I'm like, if you were really that cool, like, and yeah. you hated like people coming up to you to like take a picture and get autographs and T- totally and all that shit, I'm like, then just don't yeah. put out music. Right. Yeah. Save it for yourself. Don't bear your soul also. to the world. Yeah, it's like you chose this life of sharing your music, so it's just yeah. like suck it up. Also, know? if you're like 25, what do you have to be sad about? Yeah, like, yeah. shut the fuck up. Talk to me when you're 36. What's been your weirdest fan interaction? If because you do, you are a personable guy that it seems like you're approachable and are always down to have a conversation and just like I've had engage. A, I've had a few like um, people just. I think early on, it's hard to figure out sometimes when and how to communicate with fans on on the internet. Mm. And some people who seem harmless and then get really ob- obsessed with the fact that Stance. you like mm. yeah yeah the <laughs> and I, a term for that i've had like some people try to like break into the green Dear room Gus. and like break into the green room yeah there's t- like there's this one kid who like is, he, is there, like a restraining order out on him no now? Like, no he, uh, no okay. um <laughs> so he's still out there <laughs> there are a few people who have like, right now who have kind of almost like said some really alarming things mm. that we're hard not to respond to and be like, yeah. making sure Step you're back. okay. Pump like, the fucking brakes. Yeah, I was Dare just like, to drive. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I was like, just kind of making sure they're okay. Right. And then they became obsessed with the fact that I was like responding to them, and then mm. they kind of like tracked me down and like, Bro. like I'm gonna be at your show, and this one dude like tried to like sneak into the green room, and there's like a security guard. Get, um, did he get damn. fucked up? <laughs> get no, I, I no, I think they just, just like they, had, they handled it. I'm sure with the plumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is that because you're so like your lyrics and music are so like emotionally personal and expressive that people are like, oh, he just like me for real. <laughs> yeah, no, the blessing and the, the curse. Of he just yeah. like me for real, for real. <laughs> Before the my last album, Orca, it never was like that. It was more just like, oh, these are bops. Like <laughs> these are all this dude's yeah. like. Yeah. A poet, and these are Bob. The poet He's a po- Bob factory. Yeah, the poet who parties. And then when I put out Orca, they like a lot of. I got a lot of people hitting me up like, "You saved my life." Like, whoa, because I. It's a That's lot of a about, lot of pressure, dude. Yeah, and it, it. A lot of the songs were like, I wasn't even gonna release this one song, First Aid, that is about kind of like me and my sister, and my sister like always kind of like having my back and mm-hmm. saving my life, kind of on tour, and just when I was really sh- struggling with mental health and all this stuff so um it just felt like during covid like a lot of people needed that mm-hmm. uh that hope for sure and and yeah, so that, that album changed there was a new group of of fans who gus gang yeah there was a new group of fans who liked me for a different reason and it was for like being real and yeah Talking about Dap Hive, yeah. yeah, it's a more so serious, it's a more serious lane than the bops, yeah. For so sure. those those fans and those kids, there were some, yeah. There's different like expectations, crazy, maybe, yeah. of like what to expect right. from mm-hmm. from the guy, from what, the god. What's the as your star rises, as you put out more music and more art? What's the biggest misconception people have about Gus Dapperton? I, I you don't party. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way. There's no Listen, way. Guys, I, you must, I you party. must be crazy. Right? Yeah. I think he's partying. If you, you don't, I party. Okay? Yeah, we're going out tonight. <laughs> we're going yeah. to live stream it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I think it's what I s- said before. Like when I think people think I'm going to be like really unapproachable and too cool for school, but I'm I'm down to talk to anyone and take a picture, sign anyone's autograph. Always am down again because you must get recognized like cr- like yeah. so frequently in Bushwick. <laughs> I. <laughs> I used to get specifically. Yeah. I used to get way more <laughs> recognized when I had a bowl cut. Oh, okay. And then also more kids like are nervous to come up to me now. I think also because maybe my music has been slightly more serious than it was when I f- mm. first started. Mm. So sure, sure. you're like, yo, this guy's broken. Yeah, yeah. be careful. No, I, th- <laughs> I might say the wrong thing. But I, I get, I'll but get I recognized on the. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'll get recognized sometimes on the the yeah. subway and stuff. A lot of times, just kids who like came to. My New York shows and right. stuff. But well, the, f- the face tattoo. Yeah, that was now. Away. Are you yeah. gonna get more? Are you gonna get more face tattoos? On pe- back on your rapper shit. <laughs> no, this you are the fucking rapper. This of is bedroom pop. so. This yeah, is, is this is my only tattoo. Really? You and went face first. Wow. I just woke up and <laughs> I just wanted this exact tattoo on my face right here, um, and I don't want any others. <laughs> what do your parents think? Uh, at first, my mom was a little sad, but it's only because I 
I like hyped it up too much. I was like, "Mom, don't freak out." Mm. My dad was like, "What?" He's like, "Oh yeah, sick." <laughs> <laughs> Tight. Cause, Pops cause, gets it. Because I, but also I've been warming them up. Dad's a big Gucci Mane fan, obviously. So <laughs> did knows. your mom think you had like the yeah like the Gucci Mane ice cream cone or the Mike Tyson or something? Like she was just nervous because I was like literally going like this, "Don't freak <laughs> out," and then <laughs> and then I think she, and then she was sad and she's like, "I'm sorry." It looks awesome. It looks really cool. And I'm like, Mom, you don't have to apologize. It's fine. <laughs> I get it. I get it. A lot of places won't give face tats, especially to a tattoo yeah. virgin. Was mm-hmm. it? Did you get to it's, go to like it's some kind of like a wall? taboo thing? Yeah. Um, no. So my bassist, his partner Lee, is like the illest tattoo artist, and uh, they were down right okay. after that. And it's the only f- face tattoo they've ever uh, oh, given. Wow. Yeah. Um, Rarified. But they know I'm like like I like have never. For a second, like they know you're never it have a real job yeah. moving forward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that was always one of my goals is like to have tattoos and never send professional emails and just do them like texts. Right, that's, that's my Uzi. my job is gonna have those requirements. Yeah, that's you and Uzi. Yeah. Well, speaking <laughs> of which, besides your own, you you kind of talked about uh, maybe some some of your own music that's coming out this summer. But like, what music are you excited to listen to this summer as the city warms up? Yeah, and you're partying. Clearly, we established that. <laughs> Man, what have I been listening to recently? Um, I go, I go, like I'll always listen to some new music. I've been feeling kind of nostalgic about, like I'm going to Coachella this weekend, and who you excited to see? Um, Jai Paul. Oh, mm. right, and the boys Fra- back. And Frank Ocean, both back. Yeah, so them two, pretty mainly them two. Exclusive. Um, <laughs> you and a lot of other people do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, s- is Frank a fan? I feel like you guys must kind of run in similar circles. I, I met him one time somewhere, but um, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe though. We'll never Maybe. know. We'll never know. He's never coming on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but when he does, we'll ask. If he does, <laughs> if he does, yeah. we got a we got a bunch of questions about the thirty five thousand dollar cock ring, and then we'll ask if he yeah, does. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't bear the lead there. Okay, so what are you? What else are you nostalgic for besides like? like I, I'm nostalgic because me, me and my homie Matt, who has directed a lot of. My videos early on in my career, and we're really good friends. Me and him are going out to Coachella. And Matt we're just Star, huh? Matt Star, Matt Isn't Cohen, Matt Cohen, um, who's also friends with Tanima, yeah, and yeah. around that time was like doing some videos with me and stuff. Um, but like I would, I lived with him early on in in the city, and I feel like and we're like staying in an Airbnb, and so now I'm thinking about all the stuff we used to listen to. So it was a lot of. Um, like a lot of like again like indie bops and shit like <laughs> there's this band electric guest uh who i love from back in the day i've been listening to a lot again um maja jordan mm. um metronomy uh yeah all right a yeah. lot of shit that i i've never heard of y- is, this like, maja is, like jordan. P- is this like indie sleaze type yeah, shit it's like no nah, just like og like mgmt era yeah. indie oh, yeah. come on now yeah yeah, yeah. classic well, speaking of uh, vi- the vintage, we read that you do thrift a lot. You do wear a lot of vintage, and you're wearing a vintage shirt today. You shouted out um, the the dead shed, shed shed head, shed the shed <laughs> yeah. head. Shout out the shed heads. Yeah. <laughs> do you still hit the thrift store and get busy like you used to, or are you too bougie now? Yeah, nah, I don't get as busy as I used to. But I think you I changed. think like uh, I think honestly. Like, I feel like you can thrift stuff that looks super elevated and sure. pair, pair it with something that's designer and new, and it it just look super well together. So I, I still try to do that as right. much as possible. But honestly, just don't shop in general as much as yeah. possible. You shop in like, closet. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I well, just don't really shop. But that if much you anymore. do see Gus Dapperton thrifting in your neighborhood, that rent is going up. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Dapper's r- literally in your stage name. But like, what's the number one tip you would give to the young impressionable audience at home for just being a dapper ass gentleman who's always fitted? Yeah, I always and just a class act. Yeah, let's be real. Look I always just say like, always be yourself and always draw from your inspirations and. Um, you know, don't be afraid to be an in- individual. I think the reward is generally greater than the the risk and for sure inconvenience of it. Are you the best dressed indie musician out right now? <sighs> Let's fucking go. Know. You gotta be. I mean, come on, dude. You gotta be in the conversation. Are you underrated? Maybe. 
<laughs> like, are you not getting enough flowers? And is that about no? To I think I'm. Ra- I think I'm. Pod? I think I'm rated all okay. right. Who else is? Who else is? Because I do your... a lot of like fashion stuff. Sure, too. that's fair. Who else at your level though? Um, the help at your waist <laughs> level. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Shout out Chandler and Noah, dude. Yeah. I don't even know. Omar um, Apollo. Yeah. Yeah. Dominic Omar. Fike. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Dominic another, Fike another too. Another face tattoo guy. Yeah. Who in both the be- of them are? Yeah. Who in the bedroom pop space are you a fan of? Because we were like looking, because like we're a little bit older. And we'll say that and we were like <laughs> googling like just general lists of, of the genre and like like that's why we said like you're a face of this because you kept popping up. But I wonder who else like of your contemporaries and peers that you like legitimately fuck with yourself. I mean, it's a lot of as a fan. There's there's a lot of bedroom pop folks who are like are like well when that was like coming out who kind of like aren't as active mm. anymore like they change their sound generally yeah or, or just like don't put out music as much and a are a little job. more <laughs> yeah but um no like i'm a huge fan of omar S- steve lacy claro oh, yeah, right. um all the all those people and Do then you, more like people who are coming up to mm. like spill tab and Right, all your open Michelle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you like the phrase "bedroom pop" or being like put in that box? Or I used to not board? like it when I was coming out because, or when like, because you're very outside. <laughs> exactly. No, just a um, sad boy yeah. in his bed. <laughs> because I think it like just didn't describe exactly what it was. Because I think most like a lot of massive music and like pop music and stuff has been made in like a really um small setup in someone's bedroom mm. so i think it kind of was just describing like where and like if the fact that it was more diy maybe but like yeah. for me i wasn't trying to make music that sounded diy i was trying to make it sound pretty polished mm-hmm. always okay um so I didn't like that, but now I've like kind of came back and sort of like reclaimed it because I do really appreciate that era and that time, um, and that time of like the internet and stuff. So Things were simpler. Yeah. <laughs> Is bedroom pop an outdated phrase? I th- I feel like it doesn't get used to describe music like now as much anymore. I think it gets to, to describe that like era mm, in like okay. 2017, 2018. It's almost like that sound became a dom or like a dominant force in. Just pop music. Yeah, yeah. Pop, it yeah. just it, it just has like became pop music exactly yeah. with with like how also like a lot of those songs just blow up normally like another song would now. Well, they also found other like ve- other means to blow up and yeah, just, like, yeah. Get, you know, going crazy mm-hmm. on the radio or whatever. Yeah. Um, back to the fits though. Mm-hmm. You're wearing two pieces of acne. Mm-hmm. You're wearing two pieces of Uniqlo. <laughs> socks and Basics. Yeah. <laughs> what brands are most represented in your closet? Yeah, put us on, bro. Is it acne? Oh, low key. Okay. Well, um, I mean, yeah, like, I like, yeah, I like Egg House Lada just for right. like basic jeans and stuff. Right. Like, they just fit really well. Do you, do you go to their shows? Or do you no, know I haven't. Um, But I went, I went to their sh- store recently and got a, a nice fit. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, right. but, um. Did you get the Gus Daverton discount? No. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh, uh, fuck it up. What the fuck, guys? No, it's do you know what's bullshit. an underrated, like, basic. Store is Cos. Oh yeah, sure. yeah. Cos like is like lit. Socks it's like the fancy boy H and M. Yeah, it, or I I kind of see and it as like they that yeah that's yeah. but I kind of see it as like a a little bit more elevated Uniqlo because it's, it's it's more super chic. Ba- yeah, it's chic and like just the fits like and the women's section like the fits are perfect. Do you buy women's clothes? Yeah, I'd say <laughs> this is women's. This is women's. These pants. Um, they just you, fit better. Right, right. You <laughs> are, are you ever called out for or. Scared you'll get called out for queer baiting. Uh no, just because I th- I think the that term even hold I think the <laughs> one thing that is like the one art form, if you can call it an art form, that is represented in gender is fashion. It's like men and women, mm-hmm. and I think it's just like the biggest bullshit. I think like a lot of stuff should be unis- unisex because yeah, body, body types like are not separated by gender, right? So I think fashion and like it doesn't beauty matter. is like yeah. fair game it should all just be i believe it's the same the eye of the and also like co- like i think a lot of men you know like to wear like women's perfume because it doesn't have the this like classic one conform Muskiness. smell <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> um okay so besides costs oh yeah what else what else is most represented in your closet at Casalata? dude I, I don't even know I, it's a it's mainly thrift 
thrifted stuff. bus seats. And then there's a few there's a few <laughs> designer things like, but it's it's Celine? mainly thrifted stuff. And then like some some of like my friends brands like advisory. I have a few advisory mm. pieces. Advisory um, board crystals. No, it's you know uh, different brands. Okay. You know like Danny Cole, like his collaboration with advisory. Okay. I think I've seen uh, I've seen advisory. Yes, on Instagram. they're like a new they're like a new streetwear brand. You yeah, guys yeah, should yeah. check them out. Right. Um, Sick. There you go. Yeah, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, Beep Beep Bella. I have oh, like all the sure. hats, all the hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like a lot of like up and coming stuff. Do you have like a, a holy grail piece that you're still kind of like looking for, or for you is it more about like less about pieces and more of like look at the ensemble? Hmm. Good question. Thank you. Nah, I think. I, I'm one of those people who I'll get new clothes and then like this fit I've worn like five times. You're an outfit the last repeater month. Yeah. and you're not ashamed of that. No, because and, should and be. you shouldn't be. Yeah. No, and it's like yeah. I don't like wearing like I, I like like donating clothes when my closet gets too full and mm. yeah. What a guy. <laughs> no, I just like no, like I just like going <laughs> like just going out with the old and never coming back to it. Right, right, right. With the new, just to keep it fresh. I do like the idea of like not being a uniform dresser where every day it's like the same thing, which is, and that's fine, mm-hmm. you know, teach his own. But I do like the idea of you're like, yeah, these five things look great together. And then like just wearing that whenever you each wear month it. I do or it each like time. season. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I yeah, so yeah like for sure. Spring, I'm like rocking this. this I like that. This is, this is a heavy spring fit. Yeah. Ooh, can't wait to see the summer. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's about <laughs> to get baby. spicy. Yeah. Well, one of the pieces, one of the Johns that you're wearing right now is the watch uh, gifted to you by. Your girlfriend, mm-hmm. you just celebrated five years with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way every girl wants to be celebrated with a TikTok, with hard a, launch, with <laughs> a hard launch TikTok. <laughs> no, and especially my girlfriend hates that. But that uh, shit. she liked she liked that one. Oh, oh like you have to like convince her that it w- like please let me do this because I want to celebrate you. No, nah, no, nah, this this one. Um, Did you have the label make it for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, this this one was. She likes like when I hype her up in that way on. On Graham, but she in general doesn't like taking photos with people. Like, well, she takes the photos. Herself. Yeah, exactly. She she hates being in front. She's of She's like, camera. all these other photos suck. I should it's be mainly that it. that she just doesn't like being <laughs> like in track. front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but as as your star continues to rise and as you continue to put out more music, like, how do you navigate making such personal music while holding some elements of private life private? I definitely struggle with that more. Like, people love. I I think the one thing I just struggle with is like. I've always been quality over quantity, and I feel like in today's world, it's just become a bit more quantity over quality. So I just struggle with, like, it doesn't come naturally to me to just, like, share a lot of my personal life. Like, I usually would always like to feed people a really, like, polished, tailored product, but now it's, like, they want to see every or like Part BTS or like, you know, kind of like down to earth shit, yeah. which is like fine, especially as someone who wants to be like approachable in a certain way. But like yeah. the idea of being a total pack, a polished package like that kind of goes completely counterintuitive. To no, a right? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. But when you give people a little morsel of your private life, do they they just gobble like it's fucking chum in the water? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess so. Um, they Please definitely have another they crumb def- of private. Yeah, life. no, <laughs> they, I mean, yeah, this the stands for sure. The stands definitely look like that, do but do I don't know if like my peers maybe like seeing everything I'm doing. Like, yeah, yeah, I can't imagine sure. they do, but <laughs> like, oh wow, cool, get ready with me, guys. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> no, exactly. You've already seen this. Fit. Yeah. <laughs> do you listen to your own music when you fuck? No, um, I don't really listen That's to any music. <laughs> it's a step too far. <laughs> no, it's okay. You got to give it the fuck test. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some Especially those bops. People are definitely listening to your music to either get to the fucking yeah. or yeah. be doing the fucking. People have told me that before. People, oh, wow. when What's I your first, reaction? You're like, you're I, welcome? I think it's great, yeah. <laughs> you me, you'll be tapping some of my, go, some off, of my friends, go off and get off. Some of my fr- <laughs> friends have been like, oh, dude, I was playing your new song. Like, you know, it's good vibe, good vibe, yeah. <laughs> good vibe. Your friends listen to your voice while they no while like this, this, this was one one particular occasion and I was <laughs> one like one particular fucking yeah. sicko I, th- uh, I and I was former I, friend <laughs> <laughs> I put a lot of respect on it I, was like, I, I mean that is that. like the ultimate cosign yeah is that person like I can they yeah. can already just like call you and hear your voice so yeah. like, playing it while they bust a nut is yeah 
That's a real fucking. They can that's stay, a big level. They can say rock hard. If like, <laughs> imagine like it's like if I'm like having sex and Lawrence is like fucking. I'm listening to him podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good yeah. God. Please don't be fucking a podcast. Just period. I'm wilting quicker than an orchid in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, Gus: sex, drugs, and rock and roll, the classic trio. Mm-hmm. But as wash <laughs> outsiders, can we get a status check on like the sex and the drugs? Is it still like fucking rampant? Are you guys? No, still as no. <laughs> I, I, I think also not like just for, sorry, not just for you because obviously you're wiped up, but I mean just like in the world of rock and roll in 2023. I think, I mean, in general, in the world, I think it is still pretty rampant. What's your preferred drug these days? Ooh, I like shrooms and oh stuff. yeah, baby, chocolates. Yeah, Tasty. you gotta get the, the gummies. Yeah, the gummies are nice because they're very. It's like a weed gummy. Like you know exactly mm-hmm. how much you're getting. Not to yeah. be a hardo, but I just heard of gummy MDMA. I believe it was from you. Yes, and I want to <laughs> fucking tap into that, dude. <laughs> um, we've been talking about how your music is so just personally tapped in. Have you ever like kind of related a personal experience in your lyrics that's come back to bite you in the ass? Like an ex of yours recognized something they did in the lyrics, and they're just like, "What the fuck, Gus? That was our shit." Yeah, put anyone on blast, and they found out. No, and and uh, surprisingly, with with my girlfriend Jess, I write a lot of songs that are about her, and and she really likes the ones that are honest and like, even if they're and positive, I would hope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but even just kind of like dark, like she <laughs> can recognize the ones that like are good. She just like, if the song is good, she likes it. She well, doesn't honest. care about. Yeah, like what you're saying, yeah. like it's uh, for you. It's like honesty is the best policy when you're making yeah, music, and yeah. I'm sure she can like back that up. One hundred percent. But if you her like favorite a- songs are like the dark, the darkest ones, like the. She's like, I'm gonna take a note, manipulate him later. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like take a, if you like guys have a fight, and then you have a fucking song that's like, uh, I hate it when you like put the forks in the spoon slot or something. She's like, fuck you. She's that would like, be that would like, be something we fight about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Oh, Bob nah, on deck. Nah, it's yeah. not. Nah, it's never. Bob it's Fester never Bork. been like. It's never been like that. And I think <laughs> that's like a sign of someone who has some bigger issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. No, absolutely, <laughs> without a doubt. Yeah. Um, speaking of your personal life, how was going to college in Philly? Super fun. I I really just. I'm not meant for school. I I dropped. I'm say not meant for Philly. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. A lot I, of us aren't, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love Philly, but um, <laughs> I didn't love. Going to class and I, I mm, felt like I, both, I felt like I really I wanted to I went to a music program to be an artist and that's something that they didn't want to push you into being they wanted to push you into like every little niche category and take that category and run whether you're like an audio engineer like a manager shit. yeah and I just wanted to have like a little bit of all of it so it felt a little bit counterintuitive did it help you get your reps in though and like obviously it's yeah. a way out of Warwick. Yeah, no, it it helped me just being in a city and being able to play shows right. and meet people yeah. and like collaborate. That that was the what it was best for really. With like the nail polish kind of like gender fluid look you have going on, mm-hmm. did you ever get hate crime in Philly, <laughs> a known <laughs> hateful city? No, only from like <laughs> like U Penn <laughs> frat yeah. kids. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they yeah. said some words that uh Do you know who my father is type motherfucker? Yeah. yeah. Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, Gus, it is time Ooh, to get yeah. the next segment of the podcast. Everyone's favorite it is called <sighs> Dead Ass. Sucking and fucking. Eats and cheeks. Sex and baby. What's the way to Gus Dapperton's heart? Great question. Should we ask um, <laughs> Honestly, like humor, being yeah. being funny. And I, I can't stand people who like don't have a heightened sense of humor and just like right. enjoying themselves and... Yeah, I no, know. I get that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this question is probably a little outdated because you've been wifed up for five years, but, like, what are some fashion red flags on a girl when she maybe shows up on a date, or just in general? That's a really good what question. What do we do keys you into the fact that she Yeah, sucks? and I know you're seeing some shit in Bushwick, bro. You're ground zero I think for cooked y- forces. I think, yeah, just, like... You're in the kitchen. <laughs> those, like, I- like, influencery, like, really tall, like, brown boots or, like, those, like, desert hats. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so anyone dressed like they're going to Coachella, yeah. literally. A couple years ago. Yeah. Any girl from L.A. <laughs> yeah, 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 truly. No, like, exactly. <laughs> okay. They just immediately suck. Yeah. You're already torched. Know. You already know. <laughs> What's the worst first date you've ever been on? Obviously, it's been five years. Yeah. Fuck. Good question. Um, 
the worst first dude. Maybe you wrote I've a song about it. On. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. He's thinking so deep, many. I know. Yeah, no, I can't even think. It's okay, let me ask this. I haven't had a lot of bad ones. What was your first date with uh, your current girlfriend? Yeah, what do you guys do? Yeah, so um, I met her on a photo shoot for milk makeup. She was shooting me. Nice. And it was all these like Leveraging really the power dynamic. Yeah, Hell for yeah. real, dude. <laughs> she was leveraging her power oh, yeah, dynamic. Yeah, she was. <laughs> no, was she like, yeah. oh, I know, take your shirt off. You're like, what? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Just a, it's just a facial beauty shoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Um, There's no reason for me to get naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, it yes. was. It was. It was yeah. really she cool. It was ass, like. <laughs> it was yeah. all these like, y- like really cool young people running this whole show in this massive studio. They had um a, a bunch of other artists doing it. And I was trying to find a way to like ask her out, but it, it was like it would have been too like unprofessional. Right. Like in the yeah. midst of everything, she was shooting the whole time. So I was like, I literally was like, if I can't find her Instagram, I'm going to email the producer <laughs> and be like, hey, this if you want to give Jess my number, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, but then I found her Instagram. I was like, hey, would you want to get a drink later? And then we went to Forget Me Not, of mm. course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> And no, it was such us? a such a <laughs> such a good vibe, and we were just cracking jokes all night. And immediately, it was just yeah, connection instant. Yeah, nice. for sure. She's for the sure. one, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. When it is now a uh, date night, it's been five years. You know, you got to keep things spicy. You got to keep uh, things interesting. What's your go-to slutty fuck me fit? <laughs> for when it's like <laughs> tr- Gus is trying to get lucky tonight. Yeah, <sighs> we d- yeah we don't ha- have any of that really. Um, no date night. No, we have day nights okay. all the time. It's but your just fits are just dinner, you... dinner and a movie. We, we're mm. obsessed with movies. Oh shit! Um, okay, just going to the movies you got as a much favorite, as we can. You got a favorite of all time? Maybe like a couple favorites. Love talking cinema. Oh yeah, I mean like favorite movies yeah, of all yeah. time. Uh, and then tra- we'll get back to the fucking Train fits. Spotting is mm. my favorite film mm-hmm. of all time. Swingers, have you guys seen? Of swingers? course, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You're so money, baby. You don't even know it. School of Rock. I, oh, I yeah. to, I, As a musician. <laughs> and it's just like, you got to put one of like your childhood like... Is that what you thought Drexel was going to be like? <laughs> yeah. I wish. I Professor wish. Professor Jack Black. Yeah. Um, Schneebly. <laughs> Professor Ed Schneebly. Yeah, those are, probably, Schneebly. those are probably like my three favorites. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, it's a nice right. little eclectic little yeah, mix. Yeah, not bad, yeah. dude. <laughs> so back to slutty fuck me fits. You're saying you don't get extra spicy on date night? Keep it... I mean, no. you're pretty like this man is yeah. sex on a stick, just on <laughs> yeah. a fucking, on a fucking. People Friday. are trying to dress like you when they're going, like yeah. you're the regular yeah. bodega uh, fit. Yo, when let you're me going ask you this: date night. when you're chilling in Bushwick, just living your life, getting inspired, do you or have you seen or starting to see? Are you seeing Gus clones? Whether it's like the stash or the you know Billy Kimber middle who, part. Yeah, there's kids who come to my shows, but uh, who like you know their style is reminiscent of mine or, or no? When you. a lot of bulk bowl cuts, like I'm. Like when really? I first started, there was a lot of people. Yikes! Well, I think still. I think the sometimes. Do as I say, not as I do. Get a it's real like haircut. You're like not a rock star. That was my bowl cut era. <laughs> there was a lot of people who got bowl cuts for sure. <laughs> so you're to blame. <laughs> Wait, so when you get when like ten years from now when you do a Gus Dapperton eras tour, there's gonna be like motherfuckers showing up in bowl cuts and like the red hair. Maybe. <laughs> Are you flattered or is it like a little? Is it like this is a line too far because you're clearly somebody who you know really has an is, effect on these people. Yeah, and but also you're a fan of people like you said, be yourself. So when people like are being you to some degree, that's like not the message. Yeah, totally. But you know, I I do find like it's really not that bad. There's I I've been to other shows where kids are dressing exactly like the artists, um, and y- like when you go to my shows you'll notice a a pattern but it's it's just like i think there's not a ton of people who like dress just like me there is a lot of individuals it's a lot of like I seeing yourself and yeah, yeah, yeah it's a lot you of that. you yeah. are their style icon that they're drawing inspiration from yeah um have you seen anyone show up with the face tat oh no yeah so the craziest tattoos were so now i've i Crazy tattoos of someone just getting my face on them, like with the bowl cut. <laughs> oh, couple Yo. Of, there's been a couple of those. Which can I'm they get a can, can they get a cover up where it's like the different <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah. hair cut? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I did <laughs> think about that before, like changing my hair, like one when, when I saw. Him, you didn't consider the psychos that got your face tattooed on them. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so did you feel bad for the guy when you went from bowl cut to middle part? You're like, oh no, yeah, guy. like well, like a little bit, but <laughs> but no, I think. I think it's cool. I, a lot of them are very tasteful, but no, a lot <laughs> of people now get. I try to incorporate symbols that like 
relate to the message behind the album. So mm-hmm. this was for my last building. album, yeah, Orca. Yeah. So a lot of people get those tattoos, and to them it can be, you know, whatever they want it to be. Right, yeah. Like my face or like they can project onto it. and yeah, yeah. It's a, a personal interpretation of symbology, not yeah. a... Yeah. Objective so a lot of people were getting <laughs> yes, this. They can't really interpret like, that any yeah. other way than on you. Their, on their no, face I have like I I haven't seen on their face, but okay. but like a ton of just this kind of symbol. symbol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's again better than way, getting way Gus's better. Face yeah, way better. on your body yeah. permanently, yeah. bro. Yeah. Gus, how much money do you make? I don't. Do you know? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, he doesn't like, want to say. <laughs> I will say that there will be a day when I sit back and sort of like we'll be okay with I don't know just chilling but all I care about is music and art and I invest all my money back in really? it. Oh right it. you yeah. put it back into yeah, the, whether it's like recording is the equipment. home studio fucking bussing is it gussing gussing right now? <laughs> yeah the home the home studio is, is really sick and it's kind of just everything I need um but everything just comes back to like before I was on with a label, like I just paying for a lot of videos myself sure. and paying for a lot of touring backing and, you know, buying all the gear and everything. So it, there will be a point where I kind of like sit back and chill. But at this point, it's still just right. full steam You're ahead. Yeah. yeah. What's the Gus Dapperton merch look like? We have some really sick merch coming. It, we've. Yeah, we've had a lot of different stuff from over the years. The one I'm really hyped on is, I don't think there's any more of these, but the Horizons, we just did a, a one-off, like, um, crew neck sweatshirt oh, with an embroidered Tight. like thing, and it's it's my favorite thing we've made, because it's, like... The H, it, like, the font, the H yeah. font is fire. Yeah. It looks good. It, it's not, like... Good typography. It's not, like, Gus Dapperton. It's, like, right. you just wear Horizons. No, exactly. It could it's be like anything. And could yeah. be its own street... No, no, yeah. Another streetwear brand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have two questions for you, Gus. One yeah. is, what are the home studio rules, if any? Put... Yeah. Put everything back the way you found it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, like... Put the knife... Put the forks in the fork drawer. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> let... I'll let People come, like my homies come use it, and that's just, yeah, just make sure you put everything back. That's the back. policy. And then yeah. the second is, what is the Gus Dapperton tour rider? What are the must-haves? Yeah, my sister is in charge of the rider. <laughs> um, so it's all her favorite shit? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no. She knows what you like. No, she she knows what the whole band, like, she's kind of like the lia- liaison for the whole band. Um, kind of, so like a road like, manager. She's like band mom. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Uh, so what is your favorite shit that you you need to have? Nowadays, it's like a lot of like sparkling water, okay. like Lacroix and stuff. We Sinar- always, we always Sinar- just can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we j- just have um, a lot of like s- cold cuts and sandwich materials because then we can nice. take them on the bus and just have oh, them, like in thrifty, the morning. Thrifty, yeah. smart dude. Um, and then ah, yes, beer. salami for breakfast yeah. again. Yeah, <laughs> then, then take the boy out of Warwick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then take the Warwick out the boy. <laughs> uh, just beer, wine, and, mm. and what's your beer choice bottle. when we are um, partying? It tells a lot about a person. Yeah, I like, I mean, my favorite beer is just Guinness on draft. Nice, dude. Um, Hell yeah. But, like, bottle is just, like, Modelo. And okay. Modelo's with the fellows. You already yeah. fucking know, dude. Yeah. Okay. Hell All yeah. right. See, this is why we know we're going we're gonna to party well together. <laughs> yeah, this is how you want, if you want to get busy like your hero, Gus Dapperton, slam a fucking Guinness like Sully. <laughs> yeah. Like Eric O'Sullivan. <laughs> yeah. That's why you like bar games, just the fucking yeah. the, the Guinness. Wherever dude. they got Guinness, dude. Okay, so besides music, gear, and I guess you no longer have to self-fund your own like artistic projects and endeavors. What do you like to spend your hard-earned money on? Is it food? Like you were saying, like you guys love going out to dinner? Yeah, for sure, food. Um, what are your top spots in New York City right now? Hmm. Well, I, I give... I'll give like... one. I'll give one or two like yeah, my secret spots. And <laughs> then one... Please one, gatekeep. One spot in, in Bushwick that I think is super underrated uh, is... The sushi spot Bush Niwa, mm. um, they're s- super good, and I feel like not a lot of people, like not a ton of people, go there. Okay, let's keep I, it I, order, I order from there sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it's really good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Super solid. It's like a solid su- sushi yeah. option. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to find. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Um, okay, there's a really good soup dumpling spot Ooh, in the more. East Village called Ola. Okay, U L U H. Um, also, kind of underrated for like how incredible it is mm. and it's like really elevated they do some like really unique kind of they'll do like a 
white truffle fried rice. Like, Ooh. they have a lot of shit like that. Like, Hell yeah. Tell flavors. me more. It's, okay. It's really good. Getting crazy. Yeah. Um, Damn, how do you stay so skinny as a gourmand? Yeah. What? Dude, I honestly don't. Well, it's because you're like 25. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's no, yeah. <laughs> Age um, No, low key, I, I don't like exercise that much but i i skate and then on tour mm. if you like come to a show i'm i'm like running around the You're whole show it. i'm like doing high knees the whole time <laughs> um so working off those models on and tour I, I feel pretty fit and i'll like stretch before and everything hell yeah so yeah are you a good first. skater yeah, I'm decent. Like, I think like the rule is like if you can tray flip, you can like say you're. you're so you can de- tray flip then. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Uh, um, anything else you are fucking splashing out on besides? Because it's not clothes anymore, right? So it's mm-hmm. like meals and music. It's it's maybe traveling and Ooh. Uh, like vi- like personal travel. Yeah, personal travel and food. Okay. Where are you trying to Where are you trying to travel to next? Yeah, what's on the list? I think we're. I'm trying to go to like. Greece, maybe. Mm. I've never been to like Greece. For the s- over the summer? Maybe. Um, I don't Lincoln know if I'll have club. time this summer, <laughs> but <laughs> that'll be the next personal va- vacation. Okay. Hopefully. Do yeah. a little fucking European tour. Hit up Athens. Yeah, yeah. I think we may we may have that planned. Ooh. Uh, but on tour, I, I don't even get to chill at right. all. It's like... It's work. all business. Yeah, yeah well, no. I, it's just like... There's not a lot of time to explore each, each oh, city. T- right, right. It's You're on the like move. Yeah, every yeah. day, yeah. Why is that? Why, like, if I'm an artist and I'm like, if I'm traveling through Europe, it's like, all right, I want to play Amsterdam and then I want to schedule the next show like s- five days later because uh, it's, it's more expensive. Yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. Fuck. It's God exactly. It. It's like <laughs> I the work. and there's a lot of rules surrounding like um, the bus driver schedule and oh, how much they can drive in a sure. day and stuff. So like, we'll have to make random pit stops from a long distance drive where we're like in the middle yeah. of nowhere and there's not really any opportunity to go. Yeah. Explore that much, but we'll be at like a yeah. random truck stop off the highway. Do like you and the that. band and the opening bands get after it when you're on tour? Like, are you fucking up hotel rooms? Or are you <laughs> just like, this is work? I'm trying to stay. Yeah. No, we we good. we <coughs> we always try to have dedicate a few nights to like an after party or something. Mm, yeah. So uh, a good a healthy amount. Like if, yeah. if we d- if I do a New York show, I always try to have a little after party or. Right, yeah, bro. Um, hit us up the, in the LA. Got to work yeah, in some 100%. time to destroy yeah. a bus seat, turn it into a car again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Gus. I believe th- we are at the end of the only podcast that mattered. Yes, sir. Get you out of here and into the afters. We are fans. Like mm-hmm. our history goes back six or seven years, but we're like <laughs> we're like true like Gus Gus gang now. True pleasure. Um, and excited for to see more of the music and just to fucking hang out in New York. That being said, we'd like to see you do even better than you already are now, signing with the major, Horizons out now, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we'd love to offer up some constructive criticism, if we may. Take it or leave it. Um, highly suggest you take yeah. it, because everyone that has taken it has gone on to fame and fortune. Anyone that hasn't is now fucking dead. <laughs> um, I'll go first. My first piece of constructive criticism is we talked about merch a little bit. We talked about the bowl cut. Put out bowl cut wigs like head caps yeah. as <laughs> merch, bro. What are you doing? You're fucking leaving money on the table here. Truly. <laughs> no, hundred percent. Also, in general, like sometimes it's I would ideally love for the merch to be like, like really drippy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, like you know, novelty just, you sells, make man. A band, you band tea, no, you know, for sure. Like, sometimes yeah. you got to release a bulk up, yeah. like you know, exactly. Yeah. Just happen. Yeah, yeah, just some novelty merch, and then just yeah. put, or just hand them out for free, <laughs> and then people in the audience throw them on, and the visual of that for like we're <laughs> yeah. crazy on social. Yeah, it's fucking cult, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Gus, my constructive criticism, Hold this up. should come as no surprise, is also hair related. My first question leading up to my CC is, uh, who, do you have a go-to barber? Do they come on the road with you? What's that? What is the deal there? Yeah, I, I, a lot and of shout times, them out, please. Cause they are quite good at the, what they do. Yeah. I mean, my go-to person, um, but I, again, like when I'm on tour, I'll just, we'll just one night decide to like buzz someone's head or like <laughs> cut our own hair. I cut my own hair a lot, but, oh, um, really, really? Angie at Shizen, uh, she you know Shizen. It's it's actually uh, not too far from here. They're really new spot. I'm not familiar. Um, it's super good. They're this Japanese hair salon, and they're really good at like dyeing hair. Okay. Um, and they can make it extra. Red. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, they're yeah, just they're just like yeah. s- they're super good. But um, shout Angie, okay. that's my so girl. so shout out Angie. Obviously, it seems that she's a dyer first. 
So what I'm thinking is that we share a barbershop, James and myself. It really is kind of like, you know, one of the uh, establishments we support the most in this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Mildred in New York. Shout out all the fucking boys. Rob, Paul, Eric. You should hit up fucking Mildred New York and do some fucking spawn con for meeting of the minds. The best hair in New York and the best barbershop. Mm, that's a good York. idea, actually. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> there might be a bag yeah. for you if that, yeah. th- those vintage sales are hitting yeah. for the boys. We'll Brought to you by <laughs> Estee Lauder. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, okay. Yeah. That's it. You have like people approaching you, <laughs> like uh, like sponsor your, like, become like a hair spokesperson. Is your hair insured? <laughs> no, but I. No, are I you would already be. on the fucking? Are you already on the the Propecia just to keep it going? <laughs> dude, you know, for protect that hairline no, at all costs. I've, I've dude. Already, Trust me. I've already kind of come to the conclusion, like again, it's like sort of embracing, you know what you got so i've <laughs> had a buzzed bald head before for like a video and like bicked i don't mind like if i if i just have to buzz my head and i'm losing hair like you'll I'm just fine with it. that or i'll just rock like larry david and just let it go <laughs> however like you say that now dude it's easy to say when you got a fucking spectacular head of hair on <laughs> you dude trust me <laughs> but have brands try yeah, to come to you and be like yo can you be like our spokesperson for fucking like i don't know uh men's grooming shit no, I no, but I I definitely would be interested in that. Well, yeah. you heard it here first. If any of you thirsty ass brands out there need a little bump from the Bop King the himself, Gus Bump, baby, yeah, I'll add the motherfucking the boy. Gus, thank you so much, dude. What a fucking yeah, pleasure. Thank Where you can guys. You? Yeah. What do you want to plug? plug? Um. Yeah. I mean, I I have some. This year, I'm gonna have a ton of new music coming out. Okay, so, so lock in, um, stream. Just stay tuned for sure. Restream Orca, Stream Horizons. Mm-hmm. I believe a remix just came out. Stream that if that's. Friendly to your pockets. Is that friendly to your pockets? Yeah, yeah. Stream sure. that shit. Watch on YouTube. Uh, where can the kids follow you on socials? Gus Dapperton on everything. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Do you have a, a Finsta under Sleazy McGee or anything? <laughs> no, I, I used to. And Should then... we stream Sleazy McGee? Oh, really? You got rid of the Finsta? Because I'm always wondering about that with like very like public figures such as yourself. I like... didn't get rid of it for any particular reason. I just There's too many apps now to like keep oh, track sure. of. I don't, I, I don't even have time for the close friend shit you know oh damn mm-hmm. okay well we won't be what about be real Are you on be real no <laughs> i l- i love the concept of be real though are you active on tiktok or is it just kind of like a marketing thing yeah i'm active on tiktok i, I like s- scroll and you're addicted yeah like everyone I'm else not a, <laughs> yeah i mean i'm a little definitely like probably more than i would like to be but addicted to what the tick did baby. yeah <laughs> all right uh gus thank you for coming on to the only podcast of course, thank we you guys your, your time bud thank Jeff, you guys take us out